you're just another number. You're student X. And if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. But And welcome back to the Angry Teacher channel. I'm Richard Williams, the Angry Teacher. If it's your first time here, thanks for coming by. That means you were watching my video. I would love for you to be a part of the community, community permanently. So please go ahead, hit the notification bell, hit the subscribe, become a part of us because I want you to see the rest of the videos, check out the playlist and see which ones speak to you. If you've been here before, you know I love y'all. Thanks for coming by, I'm honored. I'm humbled that you keep coming by and watching the videos. Help me build a brand, help me build a community, be a part of us. Let's get into the video. So there's always this ongoing argument, HBCUs versus PWIs. I'm gonna put out a disclaimer, I didn't go to an HBCU, but teaching for all these years and hearing kids when they come back and hear my coworkers and other folks, I tend to now, and I knew this before, but it just didn't work out for me to go to one at the time when I went to school, so now, I do understand why there is so much love for HBCUs. So I'm gonna put out about eight reasons why I believe they are important. And at some point, I'm gonna add, probably add more because there are way more reasons. I think my list is actually 15 plus, but um, I'm just gonna give you eight right now. Okay, let's get into it. Number one, so to dispel any argument because it's been um, an age old argument that people keep bringing up that you don't get a good education from HBCUs, I beg to differ. I'm not gonna even call the big names, but every school has its pluses and minuses. And so HBCUs, you get a first rate education just like everywhere else. I am not a proponent for all of those, you know, people calling these Ivy Leaguers and because it's Ivy League, the, the, the sometimes some of these, the education is questionable. It's just because they have more funding they have people that have believed, believed the hype and gone to these schools. I think you can get a first rate education from HBCUs. No matter which one, you just have to make the best out of whatever situation you've been given. Yes, some things may be a little bit more, more um, it seems like it's easier, but it may not be. It just depends on where you go and what program you're in and how much you take out of whatever is given to you, that education that you're given. So check out HBCUs. Number two, caring professors. Not that you don't have caring professors at PWIs. Now, HBCUs are known obviously because they're a little bit smaller. And so you have professors who would get to know you on a different scale. Now, some uh, PWIs, especially if they're private, are just as small, but you can get caring professors at HBCUs that actually understand where you're coming from and why you're coming from um, some areas, and they try to reach you as opposed to you being another number on their campus, another student who, student X, that there's no personal connection. Number three, and you notice I never brought race up before, but you can have extracurricular activities and events that pertain or try to reach African Americans because that's what an HBCU, an historically black college or university. So they pander to their audience or to their, their enrollment. Even if you are um, of a different race and you're attending an HBCU, you tend to learn about African Americans or you are not outcasted, don't believe the hype or, or the lies, You, no matter what race is, your race is, you can go to an HBCU. Now, what I do like about HBCUs is that they try to cater to the minorities as well as the majority, which is African-Americans. Some PWIs don't cater to minorities and you just have to be that minority on campus. So I like the fact that there are events that are hosted to tell you about your heritage. Uh, there are extracurricular activities, organizations that you can join that tell you about your heritage and keep your heritage um, pride and keep your heritage uh, acceptance to make you feel as if this is, my, this is it. These are my people. This is where I belong. Number four, HBCUs also add supportive faculty, supportive environment in general, not just the professors, but uh, I've had heard stories about 
the financial aid. They're literally walking through the, the, the process with some of the students and checking up on them. Uh, did you pick up your this and your X and your Y and the, the cafeteria uh, employees are nice. And so everything feels, it makes it feel like home and family. You don't feel isolated. And now if you're listening and you have a different or watching rather, and you have a different experience, please let me know in the comments so we can have a conversation because once again, I did not attend one, but I'm in support of them, especially within the last four years uh, with what we had with our past um, presidential uh, administration. Things got a little bit scary to the point where I am in more support of HBCUs and what my students can get out of it. So out of them. So the supporting environment once you leave my uh, arms as pops and when you go on to a college, I want you to still have someone there or people there who can take you from me out of my arms and still give you that support that you need because we know that some of our kids are fragile and they need that extra um, attention, that little extra boost. Not that I'm going to baby you, not that I want them to baby you, but I want you to know that there's something, someone there, there's an environment there that will help you grow and foster care and nurture you. Number five, like I hinted before, HBCUs have diversity. It's not just all um, black students. They have Latinos. They have white students. They have different types of white students from different areas, different places, different types of um, Spanish students or Latinos from different areas. However, the blacks who go to these HBCUs are also diverse because we know we're not a monolith. So they're different types. They're the Caribbeans. They're from, they're um, from the continent of Africa. They're from the uh, South Africa. There are a lot of blacks that stretch the gamut. And so you can find these mostly in HBCUs because even though, you know, more money is given or, or most PWIs or more PWIs have money that, that they can give scholarships to, to students, a lot of blacks tend to go to HBCUs that they can still learn about their heritage while going to school. Once again, I've been to a PWI and I didn't get that experience. I saw, yeah, you had the, the Caribbean blacks, you had the African blacks, but there was not any form of community, if you will, or it was very sparse or it was here and there. But to know that you're in, at an HBCU, that this is an ongoing thing, you are, you're always going to see your people. That's a good thing. Number six, HBCUs empower you. Now, even if you're not an African-American or you're not black, you feel a sense of you can do things because we're here for you, because we support you, because you are attending our school, because you are a human being. I'm empowering you. PWIs, some of them, especially the large ones, you're just another number. You're student X. And if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. But... We're just giving you stuff. We're just throwing you out there, throwing stuff at you. Figure it out. Don't figure it out. Hey, HBCUs kind of make sure that you feel your empowerment, that you leave knowing that you can do things. I've had some kids who seemingly there were, and granted, kids grow up all the time, you know, and mature after they leave me. But, you know, kids who didn't do much or couldn't do much or wouldn't do much, they go to HBCUs and they come back with a sense of, pride. They come back with a sense of who they are. They come back with a sense of, I can do it. I can uh, surmount my issues. I, I was horrible at, in high school because things were going on at home. Now I know how to deal with it. There's so many things that, so much growth that happens once they go to HBCU. It's astounding. Number seven, HBCUs offer a chance for, to continue the legacy. Yes, you don't have to be a part of the divine nine to be to continue the, the proud African-American or black heritage. But it's there if you want to be a part of it. With that said, you're still a part of history. You get to see and hear that African-Americans did this for the country. African-Americans can do this academically. You can do it, too. If your families attended HBCUs, then you continue that legacy of knowledge and education and empowerment. 
However, if you're the first one that's been go that's going, you can start a legacy. That's what's cool about HBCUs. Because you're not just a number or it's because they're smaller, you can be that one on campus that when your siblings, your your other family members attend, you can be the one that trailblazes for the family. Legacy is important. When you go to these larger PWIs, oh, by the way, if I didn't say it before, PWIs means uh predominantly white institutions uh, because we're just trying to separate the two types of colleges. It shows that you are leaving something behind for your family. You're leaving something behind for the next generation of, of, of minorities that are coming up. And it's a good thing. And number eight, the last one for this video is the alumni associations for graduates of all HBCUs. There, 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 it's a huge thing. You, you, there's a sense of camaraderie, of, of brotherhood and sisterhood, of, of just being the fact, oh, the, you went to an HBCU, I feel it, I'm there with you. We're there, we're connecting, as opposed to, oh, I re went to some random uh, PWI, which, you know, centers around athletics, or um, yes, we, I went to an Ivy League, but there's no, the only thing you have in common is that you went. There's no sense of, I'm there with you, I feel you, we're on the same level, we're connecting. Because my PWI is, it's it's a good school, uh, no regrets. Especially my program, um, English Education, no regrets at all. However, when I left, if I didn't know the five people that I interacted with on a regular basis in, in my different courses and coursework, it w I still I could walk in and nobody knows or cares who I am because I was just another number. I was just another black number, but it was a number. Um, whereas a PWI, it's, you know, hey, you, I remember you from, or yeah, I was class of blah, blah, blah. And there's a camaraderie that is unrivaled. And I'm just appreciative of it because it's there for my kids. When I send them off, I know that they're going to be taken care of and they'll mature and be those strong folks in the community that I wanted them to be when they were in my class. All right. So those are my eight for now. And there'll be more because we got to get this together and get our kids to dispel the myth that one is lesser than the other. It's just different. It just depends on what you're looking for. Some programs aren't in HBCUs because once again, they don't have the funding or they're not that large. Some of them. So you go to PWI. If that's what you wanted anyway, that's on you. I'm just trying to put out the videos about HBCUs and dispelling the myths about how they're lesser. They're just different. Go out, have a great time, have a great day. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. We'll have a conversation. Mm -hmm.